and give the call to the member for Hughes. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Deputy Speaker. It's pleased this morning to rise to speak on the Road Safety Standards <laughs> Bill of 2018 and the other related bills. Well, Madam Deputy Speaker, I must admit I'm a bit disappointed sitting here. So I came in specially to listen to the member for Graindler because I thought this bill was a wonderful opportunity for those in the Labor Party to set out how they are going to get a 45 per cent reduction in the CO2 equivalent emissions from the transport sector. Because that is their policy. They say the targets that we have for Paris, which is reducing CO2 emissions of 26 to 28 per cent from the year 2005, is not enough. The Labor Party's policy is to up those to a 45 per cent reduction. Now, if they are going to have that policy, they need to come into this chamber and set out in chapter and verse not only what they're doing in plans for the electricity sector, and we know the plan is to copy the failed experiment of South Australia. They need to set out exactly in this House what their plans are to reduce the CO2 emissions in the transport sector by 45 per cent. How are they going to do that? Are they going to put a new tax on petrol? Are they going to ban a whole lot of certain types of motor vehicles from being imported into this country? Are they going to try and take cars off people? Are they going to increase road tolls? This is what the Labor Party needs to explain to the Australian public how they are going to achieve a 45 per cent reduction in the transport sector. This Madam Deputy Speaker, so often the debate about CO2 reductions and emissions reductions of CO2 is around the electricity sector. We talk about a renewable energy target, but it is effectively a renewable electricity target. The electricity sector only makes up about a third of our CO2 emissions. Our transport sector makes up about 15 per cent. So yes, it's not as big as the electricity sector, it's about half. But there has been no debate in this House whatsoever when it comes to the road vehicle standards which this bill relates to about what the Labor Party are going to do to make those emissions reductions. And here we had a perfect opportunity and yet we had nothing at all from the Shadow Minister. Well, I would hope, before the next election is called, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the members of the Labor Party would set that out in exact detail, what their plans are for the transport sector, what their plans are for motor vehicles and how they plan to get that 45 per cent emissions reductions. Otherwise, Madam Deputy Speaker, they are simply running a con on the Australian consumers. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, last year, 2017, we had 1.2 million vehicles enter the Australian market. Passenger vehicles, heavy, medium, light commercial vehicles, motorcycles and trailers. And most of these, Madam Deputy Speaker, comply with Australian design rules. And when we ask ourselves why government needs to regulate in this space, why just can't we leave it to the market, we have to be able to answer that question very clearly. And the reason is that, Madam Deputy Speaker, that uh, to, for a market to work, consumers need information. And when it comes to buying a road vehicle, there are many f f features that you need to know when you're making that purchase decision that is not transparent or you can't see. That is why we need to set road designs for vehicles. And also, Madam Deputy Speaker, some interesting figures that I noted from the Minister's speech. And he noted that when the uh, Motor Vehicle Standards Act was in first introduced 17 years ago, there were 9.4 million vehicles registered on the road. <coughs> but then we had 2,500 Australians were killed in road accidents. And yes, we've done very successfully at getting that down. Even now, we've got almost double the number of road vehicles on the roads, 19 million, compared to only a little over 9 million 17 years ago. We've been able to bring that road toll down from 2,500 to 1,300. 1,300 Australians died on our roads last year. We put that in any other context. We need to do more. 
We need to make sure that the policies of this government are to do everything that we possibly can, to get every dollar that we humanly can into improving the quality of our roads, to ensure that our design standards give us the safest cars. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, when it comes to a clash over should we go down some track of trying to achieve some 45 per cent reduction in our CO2 emissions from motor vehicles, or should we try and make our mo motor vehicles safer, and should we try and make our roads more safer? When we have over a thousand Australians that die every year on our roads, that is a no-brainer, Madam Deputy Speaker. And it's not only the road deaths that we have. Road trauma is estimated to cost our community $27 billion per annum. And yet the terrible human impact is things you cannot put an economic number on or a dollar value on. So I'd hope when we sit down and we debate what we are going to do in the space, areas of road transportation, that we give absolute first priority to making our roads safer, to upgrading them, to making vehicles safer first. That should be the priority of this government, Madam Deputy Speaker. And with that, Madam Deputy Speaker, I commend the Minister for his good work on this bill. It makes some important changes which are needed, as we have seen substantial improvements uh, in upgrades in technology, and we need to all work together in this House to make our roads safer, to make our vehicles safer. I commend this bill to the House. Thank the, I thank the member for his contribution.